take a moment today to thank the boldness of our government and our shareholders. William Hamilton built his venture on the ashes of the Second World War. The copper mine he envisioned was ransacking the First Nations' ancestral territories, drawing the wrath of the local people. It definitely took nerves of steel to stay the course, despite all this hostility. Before long, in the face of William Hamilton's cold and uncompromising stance, the petitions and peaceful protests turned into sabotage, vandalism, and other criminal acts. The industrialists' private properties also encountered the wrath of the demonstrations. Carl Faubert, a veteran of the Korean War, was hired from Montreal as a private detective to shed some light on this whole thing. But at the end of his long journey to northern Quebec, the detective did not only encounter property damage, he also came face to face with the corpse of William Hamilton. The strangeness only kept building throughout the investigation. A powerful, unseasonable blizzard hit the region. Bodies frozen in unbreakable ice appeared. The local fauna began to act strangely and aggressively. Carl Faubert began to doubt his own sanity. The detective felt the weight of a gaze as if he were at the mercy of a powerful, feral creature waiting for the right moment to attack. Carl's fear was taking over, overpowering his reason. He was giving in to delirium. In that instant, he thought that the dark waters of the lake might shield him from the shapes that pursued him. From there, he had a renewed hope in civilization, or whatever was left of it. Carl knew that on one of these shores stood William Hamilton's lavish mansion, and there the detective had hopes of finding a way out of the area. A phone, a truck, who knows? Under the luxurious paneling and damask carpets, he might be able to find answers to his questions. The detective wondered about the floating debris. Had it drifted out from the shore, or had it been abandoned there in the middle of nowhere? Carl saw a boat in the distance, clearly piloted by one of his own. Had he finally made it to civilization? His hopes were immediately drowned out by the sound of gunshots. Time to flee again, and fast. swam without a thought, yet each stroke was desperate. The icy water and his wounds made him feel weaker and weaker. He had to get to shore.
shaking and the hypothermia were tearing at Carl's poor body. When he finally saw a light in the distance, he was filled with a faint sense of hope. Could it be a refuge? The flames allowed Carl to see the full extent of his injuries. In the warmth, Carl began to feel the stinging burn of his wounds again. Once his injuries were treated, Carl suddenly felt very relaxed. A few hours of sleep would be just the ticket. struggled to wake up. His makeshift bandages offered him little time. If he wanted to find the truth, he had to get to Hamilton Manor without delay. Inventory of his working tools. The journal was the rock to hold on to in a rushing waterfall. Carl left his refuge, knowing that he was headed to a more comfortable, but otherwise ominous place, Hamilton's mansion.
Carl tried to put the horror into perspective. Accidents happen, and in the inhospitable far north, it happens more often than not. Nevertheless, a feeling of deja vu stayed with him, as if the carnage was not over. An access card, a rather modern piece of technology, especially for a mining complex in the far north. What could it possibly open? The plan suggested retrieved not far away. Carl had to keep his eyes open. What were these mysterious fragments? And why was there a warning about the broom? This letter raised more... Security was more reminiscent of a Korean military base than a mining operation. A gas mask. Carl had tried out older models as an infantryman. He hardly saw the need for such equipment to protect against simple ore dust. This was the mansion of the late William Hamilton. No doubt about it. There was no other rich industrialist in the area to have a sumptuous mansion built in the middle of nowhere.
This letter, found in the cabin, mentioned the gazebo. The key to the mansion would likely be there.
Hulk could feel his muscles weakening, his breath wheezing, his body going numb. What was happening to him? The floor was rocking. The walls seemed to be running from Carl's hands as he tried to steady himself. Something was not right. Carl's thoughts were twisting in his head, making him dizzy. hardly find their way in front of him. He doesn't know which way he came from or the way he's going. Everything seems to be going in a circle, a spiral. Carl suddenly feels like he's waking up, but inside the dream. Cold hits him suddenly like a bucket of freezing water. Had he completely lost it? Or was it?
did not know how or why, but Carl sensed that something in this game had been completed, and now they wanted to lead him to this cabin. pulled by a larger force towards the light that was calling him, as if it was asking to be set free. The stone that resonated in the room must have been one of the fragments HMC had been seeking. If he isolated it, Carl hoped he might come to his senses. The pulse of the stone invaded Carl's mind, and he felt a strange, dark presence take shape near him. Oh! <laughs> 